It feels like yeah. it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while for me. Yeah. I guess it's been a while for you. It's been a while since we've done it over here. Yeah. Hello. Hey. There he hey, is. I'm back. He's back. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe. Just when you thought you could come back and watch this. Too bad. Nope. <laughs> you get stuck with Will. Yeah. We're gonna talk we're gonna talk about a lot of weird shit today now that I'm back. Yeah. Hope like all... like like air fryers. Air fryers. Cobra Commander. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um there is a lot of things to talk about yes. today. Yes. Because we did miss last week. Yes. This is a combination of last week and this week, which is good because combined made one full week. <laughs> I also apparently forgot to turn off alerts, so I got to do that. Okay. So you do that. I'll entertain the crowd. Hello, everyone. How are you? I see our dad is in the chat. Ignore him. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, while someone and son two are trying to jumpstart the studio, I'll entertain the audience. Yeah, good job. You yeah. did a great job. <laughs> Bang up job. <laughs> um... All right, so there are a lot of things to talk yes. about uh, because we missed last week. Mm -hmm. uh, we we're gonna talk about apparently this news dropped yesterday. Yeah, it hit me hit me like a like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting Red Dead Redemption One on the Again. Switch. Yes, and and people are mad for some reason. Yeah, well there there's a lot of like fine details we got to get into when we, when we get into what the actual re release is. Okay, okay. So and and I, I think it's a good topic because it speaks to the broader culture in gaming that's happening right now that i've brought up in the past and that there there seem to be a lot of remakes high profile remakes and ports coming about okay and i think i think it's a timely topic thank you rockstar <laughs> uh then we also had pokemon presents which happened today this morning yes and i skimmed through the notes and just hot garbage not anything interesting at all i think the most interesting thing was again some re-releases <laughs> Yes. Uh, I anticipated that it wasn't going to be anything exciting because yeah. they haven't had anything exciting in a Pokemon Presents in a really long time. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a Switch 2 news, which I'm I'm ready to sleep on. I, I, I don't know. Did you talk about this on Nintendo? We did. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I... Uh, but it's for real this time. Yeah, I'm not convinced it's for real this time. Yeah, I, like, it's the same shit we heard the week before. Yeah. I'm mad that it's in the news cycle for a second time. I mean, it's it's going to be in the news cycle until Nintendo says... But give us new information right. next time. Don't just say, I heard the same thing. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, yes. But before we get into that, we have to thank... Some people razzle jazzle for the 34 months. Honking waffles, thanks for the two months. Uh, Blue B, thanks for the 200 bits. Hey Bob, on your video where you replace the Dex joysticks, the link is the for Nintendo Switch ones. Oh, oh, thank you. I will, I will get right on that. Uh, and Sukasa, thanks for the 21 months. So happy for, so happy the brothers are together again. Hello, I'm happy. Too. Yeah. Brat Tack, thank you for the six months. Okay. okay. And we also, before we get into it. Uh, we got some free games. Yes, because it's August. Believe it or not, fall's almost there. Your life is almost over, but there's still time <laughs> to get the free games for whatever uh, subscription service you're a part of, be it PlayStation Plus, uh, Xbox Live Gold for the final time, and mm -hmm. even Switch Online through you some bones. Life is moving too fast. Yes. <laughs> this is a good PlayStation uh, a, a Plus showcase right here. Yes. Uh, so for the whole month of August, you get PGA tour 2k 23. That's kind of awesome. That is. Yeah. Is there 24 out? Uh, I don't know. I haven't been following the, uh, the golf games in a long time. I know my boss is like a big golf game. No, guy. there is no 24 and, and not even a release date yeah. announced or anything. I know my boss is a big golf game guy. He knows the difference between PGA Tour, 2K23, and whatever the EA Sports one is now, since they don't have Tiger Woods. Actually, it comes out the second week of October. Okay. Okay. So, so and this game is available until September 4th. Okay. So you, I mean, once you claim it, you have it. But if you don't claim it right away, you have until September 4th to play it, to claim it, play it, and then a new game will come out. Wolf Den Dad in the chat says, fatherly advice, don't give out free stuff at Union Square Park. Oh, that's a 
It's that's a topical a, yeah, joke. That's, no, that's not going to be reported on because he doesn't need any more press. <laughs> um, also coming out uh, this month, part of PlayStation Plus, Dreams. I never tried Dreams, and everybody tried to tell me to play Dreams because it uh, you make your own games. Yeah. And everybody knows that I like Mario Maker. But I don't like Mario Maker because of the making part. I like it because of the Mario part. Right. You know? It's, it's from the creators of Little Big Planet. Some mm-hmm. would say the original Mario Maker. Yes. But, like, Little Big Planet had its own, like, aesthetic and charm and identity. I don't know what the hell Dreams is. <laughs> I always just see people like, oh, somebody made this in Dreams. I'm like, cool. Pe- people, but like, what is Dreams? People make really cool stuff in yeah. Dreams. And I do want to try it out. I would like somebody to compile like a greatest hits of Dreams stuff yeah. that I could go in and, and try out. Yeah. And, that, and now we could do it for yeah. free. And finally, Death's Door. Death's Door, yes. Which is the most exciting for me <laughs> because I loved Titan Souls, which right. is... The game that they previously made. And mm-hmm. for some reason, I never got a chance to play this. So, Well, here's your chance now. I'm going to I'm gonna download all of these. Yeah. I, I mean, I did because I usually do that because I'm a crazy person. I'm going to so, yeah. do it from the web app right now. Uh, f- so, once again, good month for PlayStation Plus. Again, the games are uh, PGA Tour 2K23, Dreams, and Death Store. I believe all of those games are available on PS4 and PS5. Yeah. PS4 and PS5. Uh, I wish that they were available via streaming, like a Game Pass situation. I would make my life so much easier. I don't the, want to play Death's Door in my living room on my PlayStation 5. Uh, know? It's on the keep, but I saw that there's um, there's an open beta for the next PS5 uh, firmware update mm-hmm. that's testing cloud streaming. Okay. Now, on the PS5? I, uh, I didn't look too closely into it because I didn't okay. think it was like anything. That sounds like it's on the. It PS5. probably is going to be on the PS5. Yeah. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, fine, because that's cool. Because like, y- you know, if you want to test a game out or something, but I want to stream Death's Door to my handheld of choice. I feel know? like, on one hand, it's smart to do cloud streaming to the console first mm-hmm. to like test it out, make sure it's stable like ease you into the ecosystem before they start opening it up to other devices. But by the same token, it's 2023. They're already a little bit behind the curve. They need to like put out uh, support on other devices ASAP. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That that's my issue is is that um, I think that, the streaming from the console is is their worst showing. Yeah. And releasing a whole new device that they're pitching as only streaming from the console is it's it it's a horrible sell. Yeah. So they do have to hurry up and start getting cloud streaming to to where it it is already pretty good if you do it from a PC. Yeah. Roll that out to other devices and make it one of the selling points of the project Q. Yeah. Because that it makes a lot more sense for the project Q to even exist if you're going to be doing cloud streaming. Right. And they need to add a lot more features mm-hmm. to cloud, cloud streaming if they're going to do that. So I, uh, there you go. I downloaded Death Store. All right. Now, over to Xbox Games of Gold. Bob. Yes. This is the final month of, for Games of Gold. I thought that was last month. Nope, it's this month, dummy. <laughs> And your last... Oh, I heard about this already. Yeah. I tweeted about the this. The last two games you will ever get with Games of Gold. Blue Fire and Inertial Drift. Inertial Drift. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of either of those. Blue Fire I played. Oh, yeah? I tweeted about this, and I said, this is a horrible <laughs> last month for, yeah. for Xbox. And a lot of people were like, Blue Fire, yay, Blue Fire. Because Blue Fire is... It, it's It seems like... A GameCube style platformer. Okay. But it's a bad game. Oh. <laughs> it's an indie game, so uh-huh. it feels weird, you know, shitting on it. Because yeah. I'm sure it was a small team of people who who made it. But a lot of people seem to really like it. And I don't know where they're getting any of that from. I think yeah. they just are charmed by it. But um I think it fails to set out on a lot of right. what it's trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh I played it didn't like it like at all so i uh, mean i guess 
I can sort of understand why they did lower profile games because they they basically want you to forget about yeah. this service. Yeah, they're trying to sweep this through the this service. For, for sure. This service is dead, Daddy O. Now it's all about Game Pass Core or whatever it's called, where mm-hmm. you're getting 25 games. One of them's a Halo. It's not a good Halo, <laughs> but one of them's a Halo. They should have dropped the Halo. In. Well, they probably ran out of Halos to drop in this. No, they could have dropped Halo 5. True. That would have been the one to drop. I mean, well, no, because that's included in Game Pass Core. In Game Pass Core? Oh, what? yeah. Yeah. And this is this is turning into Game Pass Core. Correct. Okay. Okay. So you're, that, okay. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they already blew their load with Game Pass Core. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they have nothing. Yeah, they have nothing. Yeah. That this this has meant nothing to us for a long time. Yeah. We thought there was a glimmer of hope a couple months ago when uh, Episode One Racer was included. We're like, oh, maybe they're turning the tide around. I'm like, no, 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 no. You that that on. just felt cheap to to include. Yeah. Um. Also interesting, they say forty dollar value and two thousand in gamer score. Do you, here's here's might be a controversial topic. Do people care about that anymore? Gamer score and like achievements and stuff. Because I stopped caring a long time ago. We're gonna make a poll. I'm I'm, I'm genuinely curious because like, you know, whenever I'm playing a game and like the little achievement comes up, that's nice. But I'm not like. Looking through the list, seeing what I can and can't get anymore. What, what's it called in with trophies? What do you mean? Like, what's the score called on PlayStation? See, I don't even know if they do scores. It's like the amount of... Yeah. I guess just ask, do trophy slash achievements mean anything anymore? Do you care about trophies slash uh, achievements? Because during the three Achievement scores anymore. Yeah. Because during the 360 era, that that was a big thing, mm-hmm. and then when trophies came out, like nobody cared about trophies, and I like it's it's weird. Like I still care less about trophies than I do gamer score, and I don't and I don't really care about like a gamer score anymore. Yeah, I I so, don't. I like, mean, uh, one of the big reasons I wanted an Xbox One was because I didn't want to lose my gamer score, yeah. and then all my friends wanted PlayStation Fours, and I was like, <laughs> fine, I guess I'll just lose my gamer score. Yeah. Uh, and then it ended up, I ended up not caring. And now I definitely don't care because yeah. I got so many things on so many different platforms. Yeah. I got a Steam achievement the other day. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Yeah. Because not every game has it. Right. In fact, I'd say most of the games that I play don't have it. That's surprising that like if you can do Steam achievements mm-hmm. and you're already making achievements for all the other systems, then just fart them over. They so- have achievements on retro uh, emulators now. Yeah. 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 And they're integrated into a lot of front ends. I also got an achievement. Uh, I played a PC game through PC Game Pass, and I got an achievement. And yeah. I was like, I forgot that I'm playing on yeah. Xbox. Apparently, all my friends got a notification that I was on Xbox, but really, I was on my computer yeah. playing a game. Everything We're in a weird, confusing time right now. Yeah. I don't know. And then you got Nintendo. Who doesn't do that shit? Oh, yeah. I forgot about Nintendo. But they do have two games uh, available now. Uh on Game Boy Switch Online, so not part of the expansion pass, but you get uh, two Legend of Zelda games, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. This is the do we Red know, Blue Zeldas. Do we know these were coming out? Yes. Okay. Yes, and they announced that they were coming well, last week, I believe. July 26th, yeah. I had forgotten about this. I think a lot of people did. I would and, like to play this. Yeah, I hear these games are very good. They're very different. One's more action-oriented. One's more puzzle-oriented. Really? Yeah. Which one's the action one? Give I have no one. idea. <laughs> Chat, which one's action? Yeah, help us out here. Uh, I do know these were made by Capcom. Why does why is the why is the Deku tree like like an uwu? Look at the uwu face on the Deku Deku tree. Again, Capcom made it, so maybe <laughs> they were trying to like do something weird. Is this the first game directed by the guy who worked on Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, I don't know. Oracle of Ages. Fubiyashi. Right? That's the guy, right? I think so. Yeah, Tears Fubiyashi. Yep. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Age of Calamity. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's uh, not the Deku tree. All right, it's the Uwu tree. Now, I, it's a it's a red and blue game, so it means there's two versions. They're, they're essentially two versions of the same game. 
I'm assuming the link up functionality doesn't work in this. You can link between them? What does that do? I think if you beat both games and then link up, you fight the final, final boss. Oh. I mean, I know that the functionality is built into the the the, the, the Switch emulator. Okay. So you have... The capability exists. I don't know if Nintendo has allowed you to use the capability. Got it. Oracle of Ages is the puzzles one. Oracle of Seasons is the action one. Okay. I want Seasons. I mean, I like puzzles, but like... Each each is a complete game capable of interacting with each other via passwords or a game link cable. Uh, Q73 Power says you get a code to send your items over. Okay. It's a password system, not a link game. Is that what it was in the original, or is that what it is now? Well, I think you can use a link cable to like link them up, but mm -hmm. I think the password is for like sending things back and forth. Okay. Or maybe in case you don't have a the uh, link Both. cable. Both. Okay. Okay. So, so they're assuming you just don't have a link cable. Okay, yeah. that, that makes sense. Um. I think we could skip ahead a little bit and talk about more stuff that's on Nintendo Switch Online now. Yes. All of a sudden. I have it here. It's a Pokemon trading card game for Game Boy and Pokemon Stadium 2. Yes. For Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack on N64. Uh, cool. Pokemon Stadium 2. Can import your Pokemon from Red, Blue. Very or dumb. Game. Very so, stupid. Useless game. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely useless. Uh, they really just need to drop the. Especially because like the box art says links to po to Game Boy Pokemon Gold, Silver, Yellow, Blue, and Red. <laughs> it says it right on the box art. But you literally. Can't. But you can't. I kind of want to dabble in the trading card game. I've heard, like I've, I know people genuinely like the trading card game on Game Boy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's pretty much a one to one of what the the game was at the time i played a little bit of the trading card game on the ipad and i had a pretty good time yeah it's actually pretty fun nice pokemon stadium uh useless you're it's basically <laughs> mario party but shittier yeah uh without the the connection to your uh your game boy games so uh i'm still i think they're still gonna do something something's yeah. gonna happen with with the the old uh pokemon games there's got there has to be if the Pokemon Presents today had any information about them re-releasing the original Pokemon games, mm -hmm. I, I, I it would have blown my dick off. Yeah, but they, of course not. They're not going to do that. No, they should. But they when won't. next year, like, actually, how often do they do Pokemon Presents? I don't even know. Honestly, I was like, I don't pay attention until they do one, and they always like randomly do one. Yeah, and and then they're yeah. not interesting. All right. Uh, so that's that. Mm -hmm. Uh, did did we? I, th I think the poll. Okay, the poll ended. Uh, sixty seven percent of people do not care about achievements okay. or trophies. Okay, so I'm not crazy. <laughs> no, I should have broken that up into uh, no, and I never did. Yeah, you know what? New poll. New poll. <laughs> but this is only for people who voted no. Yeah. Okay. So New if you poll. voted yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Stop don't, watching don't, the show. Don't vote. Read a book. Uh, you ever care about uh, trophies slash achievement score? Yes, no. Did you ever care about trophies or achievement score? Yes, at one point. No, never. Again, this is only for people who voted no in the last mm -hmm. poll. All right. Next news. Let's get right into yes. uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Red no. Dead Redemption 1. Red Dead Redemption 1 is Red Dead Redemption and Undead Nightmare are coming to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 Whoa. August 17th. That's so close. So close. I loved Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption one. one is my one of my favorite games. It is the best game in the series. Yes, it is for sure. probably Rockstar's best game. Period. If I may be so bold, I might I might join you on so that. So I am I am excited for this. I am excited that it's coming to a system I can play on the toilet. 
Uh, here we go. Experience the epic Western adventure Red Dead Redemption and its groundbreaking zombie uh, horror companion Undead Nightmare as both games come to the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 for the very first time in a single package. In a new conversion by Double Eleven Studios, the Switch and PS4 versions bring the two classic experiences together again for both new players and original fans to enjoy across modern consoles, including backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 5. One of the most critically acclaimed games of all time with over 170 Game of the Year awards, Red Dead Redemption tells the story of former outlaw John Marston as he journeys across the sprawling expanses of the American West and Mexico to track down the last remaining members of the notorious Vanderlyn gang in a bid to save his family. Relive or experience for the first time the events immediately following the epic tale of horror, of sorry, of honor and loyalty in the 2018 blockbuster Red Dead Redemption 2 as Marston hunts down his former friends and outlaws Bill Williamson, Javier Escuela, and his former gang leader Dutch Vanderlyn as the era of the cowboy comes to an end. So if you played Red Dead Redemption 2 and you want to know, hey, what's going on with this John Marston fella? Uh, how does how does his story play out? Now you know. Now you can play this. But it doesn't end there. It's it's a much better story. It is. It's yeah. such, John such Marston's be- story is much better. It's a better story, and it's like it's a better game because it's a simpler game. You don't have to do so much. I lost on. They lost me with the second one very quickly. You have to do so much unnecessary shit that doesn't matter. In this game, you do some unnecessary shit that doesn't matter. You don't have to do it it does yeah. and it feels like it's part of the exactly overall. like it yeah. feels like you're actually working towards something rather than oh i have to make my pocketbook like two percent bigger yeah which you don't yeah oh i have to worry about arthur's weight you don't i was i was classified as fat during my whole playthrough <laughs> it didn't affect anything yeah uh, this has one of the best stories in video games. Yes. It has some of those uh, experiences that those storytelling experiences that you can only experience in a video game. Yes. It has one of the best endings in video games. Yes. It's it's pretty much a perfect game. Yes. Uh, not only that, uh, Red Dead Redemption on Switch and PS4 also includes Undead Nightmare, a hallowed story expansion that reimagines the world of Red Dead Redemption as Marston fights to survive a relentless zombie horde and searches for a cure in a spooky supernatural twist on the Western genre. So all that stuff we said about this being one of the best stories in video games, uh, take that and just make it really fucking weird and silly. And that's what Undead Nightmare is. This was at a time when uh, they were doing wacky DLCs yeah. for games. They but were like, just taking the game and they were like, let's do a goof on it. And that's what But they like, did. this is like wacky DLC, I think, done right. Mm-hmm. Because nowadays... It was like, very good. Yes. Like nowadays, it's like, oh, it's just more story content. Or it's like multiplayer map packs or character packs and whatnot. This is basically an entire like other chapter to the game. But it's got a unique theme. It's and an else world. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The and other one at the time was uh, Blood Dragon, Far Cry Blood Dragon. Yes. They just took Far Cry Three, and they were like, "What if it was an '80s yes. psychotic like like action like movie, neon nutso movie?" Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in addition to both classic uh, single player experiences, newly supported languages include for the first time. Uh, simplified and traditional Chinese, Korean, Polish, Brazilian, Portuguese, Russian, and Latin American Spanish. Okay. Red Dead Redemption and Undead Nightmare will be $49.99 on the Nintendo Switch eShop and the PlayStation Store, with physical releases arriving October 13th. That is kind of a lot. That's, yeah, and at that point, that's where we get into uh, the next article. Well, which, hold on. Theta yeah. Sigma in the chat says, uh, you can still buy it on Series X, and I assume S, at, yeah. for $30 with auto HDR and upscaling. Yeah. Yeah, they do have enhanced versions on Xbox. So, uh, Red Dead Redemption and Undead Nightmare have been available on Xbox through backwards compatibility for years now. It's the 360 version that you can play on your Xbox One and um, subsequently your series systems. Uh, so, it's $30 for both of them? Um, I don't know. Okay. I'm assuming just the first one. Because I've often seen the first one on sale on Xbox Marketplace for $10. So we don't know what the stats are going to be on the Switch version. Right. Uh, This is also announcing that they're going to be for PS4. I don't know what the PS4 version stats are going to be. I I think 
it's not going to be a massive like upgrade. So, I think it's it's going to be a it's yeah it's thirty frames per second. Why? Okay, that sucks. Yeah. Why? I guess they're saying PS4, and it will also work on PS5. It just won't yeah. have any fancy stuff. It just won't have like any update to it. Okay. Well, hopefully, it still has HDR and stuff. Uh. I mean, according to this, because if Xbox has it, yeah, you know, it's not. It's well, not like the Series X version is that much more advanced than an Xbox One version would the, be. The thing is, so a lot of the like upgrades to like the Xbox version is like done on Microsoft's end. Like the oh. HDR, it's like auto. It's auto HDR. It's like Microsoft's version of HDR. Okay. That like, and it does enhance the game. But it's not like Rockstar implemented it on their end. Because I remember when the whole backwards compatibility thing was going off with the Series X. This was one of the flagship games. Yeah. Was how much better this looked mm -hmm. given Microsoft's upgrades. It's just a regular old Xbox 360 game that they were like, fuck it. Let's just make it yeah. run really good. Let's boost it with our own hardware. Mm -hmm. Wood's in the chat. Hello, Wood. Hey, Wood. Um. I'm curious to see how this is going to run on Switch. Yes. I can't... I I can't imagine how it's going to run. Like, we've seen games like this before, like Xbox 360 generation games releasing for the Switch, and they've been just fine. Mm -hmm. But Rockstar has just come out of some really bad ports for the Switch. Yeah. And that was a port house that did it. But... um. I'm more of a flank state guy. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that I get was, that. That was a port house that did it, and we don't know who is porting this. Well, we do. Oh, we do. Yeah. Is it the uh, same people? No. Uh, I just had it open. Why am I bad at everything? Uh, it's it's in the Double Eleven Studios. They are a professional port house. I know they've done. What are some of the games they've done? They did the the Lego Harry Potter games to like eighth generation systems. RimWorld is that legal? Uh, not in Florida. <laughs> Thank you. Don't Siri. find that on the web, please. <laughs> um, yeah, they Pixel, did Rust. They did Rust. That's good. They did uh, Limbo, Minecraft Dungeons. Limbo on Xbox One and PS4. Goat Simulator on console. Uh, Crackdown Three. They did a lot. Yeah. So okay. They're an experienced port house. Yeah, I'm not concerned about this yeah. then anymore. Although, didn't the people who did the 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 Grand Theft Auto trilogy? No, there was something weird with that. D didn't they? Oh no, they made like mobile games. Yeah. Uh, so Red Dead Redemption on its own on Xbox One is thirty dollars. Oh, so without the Undead Nightmare. Correct. But so, Undead Nightmare is 10. So the people who did the Grand Theft Auto trilogy was Grove Street Games. Yes. And they did Ark. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly the Ark port got a lot better. Yeah. For Ark 2. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everything else they did is just other Grand Theft Auto stuff. And Ar and yeah, it was Android and iOS ports. Yeah. So so uh, on, Xbox, on Xbox systems, Red Dead Redemption on its own is $30. And if you want to buy Undead Nightmare, that's an additional ten. Okay. So that adds up to forty dollars, as opposed to fifty dollars okay, on PS4 and Switch. Yeah. And again, of uh, Red Dead Redemption on Xbox, I have seen it go down both to ten dollars. So you can get the whole thing for twenty. I've seen uh, somebody in the chat said that this Switch and PS4 version is not going to have the multiplayer. That's true too. That's fucked. Yeah. Because the multiplayer... Well, they the shut multi down the multiplayer pretty quick. The multiplayer was good. Multiplayer... I liked the multiplayer yes. a lot. The Red Dead Redemption, that's one of those games where, like, you're going for the single player primarily. Yeah. So, like, losing multiplayer is not that big of a deal. The problem is, if you're pay if you're charging almost as much as the game costs on its, on its initial release... Yeah. Like, you would expect the total package. I... Understand a little bit because you need a lot of people for the multiplayer to be any yeah. good. Um, but yeah, you're charging a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Get the leave the functionality there. Why are you yeah. removing a piece of the game? Yeah. You, if if you're porting the game, it's there already. Yeah. You know. Um, you just need to make servers and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
uh, for and for fifty dollars a pop, you should make the goddamn servers. Yeah. Um, I don't think fifty dollars is that bad. I think if they decided that's what the price that they wanted to charge, then that's fine. I mean, if that's the price they wanted to charge, I, is the price they wanted to charge. I think forty would have been a little more reasonable, but uh, I don't. I don't think it's so bad. Games are seventy dollars now. Now, but this is a game from twenty ten. Yeah, I don't think that's reasonable. And what's fifty dollars in twenty ten money? I I look. I understand <laughs> that, but you know. The price of games goes like of a game goes down over time. Mm-hmm. So by this point, fifty dollars for a ten-year-old game, or yeah. more than that for a thirteen-year-old game, without enhancements, like that's a that's a big asking price. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like this, like twenty dollars maximum. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. I yeah. think like with undead nightmare with undead I think nightmare yeah 40 is 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 reasonable i think 30 would be the best i think 20 is crazy 20 is a crazy i mean 20 deal. is crazy 20 you're like, losing money i don't see no i don't think so the amount of money they've made off of this game already over time like they i gotta th- pay the port house port house gotta They're make Rockstar money star games <laughs> like grand theft auto makes a billion dollars a year and they can't afford to pay a porthouse with the profits of that? Eric did the math. $50 in 2010 is $69.96. Nice. It's the exact same price <laughs> as a $70 game yeah. these days. So actually, it th- does that mean it costs more now than it did back then? Well, we're we're tra- we're 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 remember, moving okay. between different times. In 2010, now. this was a sixty dollar. This game launched at sixty dollars. You got to yeah, remember. Yeah. I don't remember what Undead Nightmare launched for. It wasn't sixty. Um, it was thirty, wasn't it? It was half. It wasn't. It might it, it might have been a lot because it was a big expansion. But you know, even still, if you're charging, what what is it, what does it say? 800 Microsoft points. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. That, think, that would be $10 or yeah. $8 or something. That's like $10. No, price. $10. Wow. Get at That's a, that's at a whole ass game. Wow. That's got to be what it costs now. Yeah. That's too cheap. Yeah. It was... Like a whole like eight hour experience. Yeah, like it was like I remember it being like fairly expensive for what was essentially an expansion pack. Uh, and they did release it on disc. Oh come on, just give me. A price. You can't give me like a like an old article. There's got to be. When did it come out? Twenty ten. Twenty ten. October 2010. Halloween. Ooh. Ooh. I'm seeing $10. <laughs> That's got to be the now price. Yeah. Yeah, $10. That's fun. I'm reading the IGN review from 2010. <laughs> and it says, it's clear that Rockstar didn't skip on this package and priced at a cool $10 or 800 Microsoft points. Neither should you. That is crazy. That's nuts. It is a... Uh... Eight hour game. Yeah. For ten dollars. And I'm not sh- did you need the main game? I'm not a hundred percent sure that you know. needed the main game. No, I don't know if you did. Because it just drops you in. There's yeah. no like progression or anything. Yeah. You just you're just there. That's insane. Yeah. That was back when they would give you a deal. Yeah. That was back before they knew they could they could, they could nickel you on the and yeah. see. That's insane. Yeah. Bring back the old Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> now charging fifty bucks for yeah, for for an old ass game. <laughs> that's crazy because that also that means it's still ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox uh, Store buy Undead Nightmare Pack ten dollars. Yeah, it's it's still, yeah, it's still, it's still, still the same price. Still $10. That was. That's crazy. Um. Anyway, I I don't love that it's fifty dollars, but it, well, I think I think given the 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 market now with games like uh, uh, games being seventy dollars, games being seventy dollars, and also 
Metroid coming out and and being. I didn't. Uh, I didn't agree to that either. Metroid price. being forty dollars when it launched. Was I it thought 40? that. Yeah, it was forty. I I thought that was too much. That's too. actually pretty cheap. <laughs> that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Nintendo has been re-releasing stuff in you know physical. Yeah. For full price for yeah. full on uh, uh, sixty dollars. Yeah. Fifty to sixty dollars. So. Uh, Rockstar doing that with one of the greatest games of all time that you could spend hundreds of hours in, I don't think is is that egregious. Right. But a lot of people these days aren't going to be willing to go back to an Xbox 360 game. Right. Let me read this next article from IGN okay. about the controversy and backlash behind it. Because I think so, there are some points in this that I want to talk about and expand upon. And it, it continues as this whole like trend of you know, remakes and re-releases and ports that have been coming out at a fairly rapid pace, mm -hmm. as it were. So, uh, Red Dead Redemption's newly announced PlayStation and Switch releases could have been a cause for celebration amongst the game's dedicated community, but instead fans are up in arms over the news. This morning, Rockstar revealed that uh, 2010's Red Dead Redemption and Undead Nightmare are coming to PS4 and Switch on August 17th. Uh, Rockstar is calling the port a conversion rather than a remaster or a remake, and the company is charging $50 for this version of the game. Uh, Red Dead players on social media are upset about the price, missing multiplayer, and the lack of a PC release. It doesn't oh, yeah. It doesn't help matters that rumors about Red Dead Redemption Remake uh, have been flying for weeks following a fresh rating for the game in South Korea. Fans got their hopes up over a full-blown remake with many clamoring for a version that would put the original in line with Red Dead Redemption 2 in a similar manner to how The Last of Us Part 1 is now visually similar to Part 2. People wanted a PC port of this game. Since, since the game came, came out. out. Yeah. It has never been on PC. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you see a tweet here uh, from Mr. Pio. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, uh, what we wanted, a remake with uh, the map that is in Red Dead Redemption 2 already. 60 frames per second, dual sense features, uh, current gen only and uh consider it the ultimate version and what we're getting is a 30 frame per second port no 60 uh it's not a remake or a remaster rockstar not carrying sad face mm -hmm. i don't know if i would consider i feel like we live in a world where we have gotten not only are we getting a lot of old games we released we're getting them done in brand new ways we're getting, you know, all the Resident Evil remakes that are brand new games with modern uh, trappings. We got a really good Dead Space remake recently. We're getting a Silent Hill 2 from the ground up remake. We're getting Metal Gear Solid 3 from the ground up remake. And I think people have, like, gotten in their mind that, like, whenever an old game is coming back, that's what they should expect now. Instead of just an old game being available again. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm coming at this with the lens of like we've spent a couple of podcasts complaining that publishers aren't making games available anymore. Uh Red Dead Redemption, at least you can get on the Xbox store. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um Sony's got some catching up to do mm -hmm. in terms of backwards compatibility. Um the fact that it's available at all is a huge win. Right. For fifty dollars that that now we're yeah. Now, now we're bringing up more questions. Like, what are some other games that we're upset aren't available? Sonic Advance is one that I always talk about yeah. because it's so easy to just pirate that game. Yeah. Um, what if they released Sonic Advance, all three of them, but they were thirty dollars each? Like, yeah. like that's like, am I happy that I have it, or am I mad that they cost so much? I mean, I would be mad that they cost so much considering we just got Sonic Origins Plus, which is $30, and it gives you all the Genesis games, mm -hmm. Enhanced, and all the Game Gear games. Yeah. So, like, from that perspective, we know Sega is capable of doing good packages like that. And if they were to, you know, charge $30 individually for the Sonic Advance games, that would be upsetting. Yeah. So... Then you're getting into prohibitively expensive territory, yes. which is still okay to pirate. Yeah, still, we're still not <laughs> pirate at that point. Uh, yeah, Rockstar is. Uh, fans are disappointed that Rock Rockstar is giving Red Dead Redemption on PS4 and Switch uh, what appears to be a visually similar experience 
to the original PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, Rockstar also didn't announce 60 frames per second support for the new port, leading fans to believe it will run at the original's 30 frames per second. It became This problem becomes even more glaring when the community realized that Red Dead Redemption is already playable on Xbox Series X in 4K, uh, which was quickly pointed out online. So, uh, so here's, here's one thing about retro games that I'm learning now. Yeah. There's this guy on TikTok that I've got served a couple times, and he does this. This I forgot his name. Actually, I can find it pretty quick. Okay. He does really. He does these really cool TikToks of him, uh, showing you how to emulate certain games right. and how to get the best quality out of them. Gaming Memories is the name of the TikTok. Gaming Memories Pod. Oh, apparently it's a rival podcast. Maybe oh, I there you go. It. No, but they they seem to t- like the last one I just saw was Mega Man Legends. He right. shows you all the settings to make it play awesome. One of the settings was to make it go from 100% speed to 125% speed. And I was like, now you're just changing the that's yeah. <laughs> not the way the game was meant to be played. It's cuz the game's a little slow and I like kind of understand why yeah. you want to do that. And that's his, you know, uh uh preference. Right. I wouldn't want to do mm-hmm. that. But we're talking about something like Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. The game was meant to be played at 30 frames per second. Is it going to be better at 60? Yeah. I, I've never been one for like, you know, every game has to be 60 frames yeah. per second. I understand that some games, 30 frames per second is just fine. I'm sure Red Dead Redemption, 30 frames per second is just fine. Has yeah. always been just fine. Will continue to be just fine. Yeah. Um. So I don't think that's necessarily... If this was like point. if this was like a competitive online yeah. game, I'd want it to be a high frame rate. But it's yeah. a it's a story driven, almost cinematic experience. I don't think a low frame rate is really and and it's a consistent as long as it's a consistent thirty. What's the big deal? Yeah, you know. Uh, fans are calling the port a cash grab. With one of the top posts today on the subreddit reading, "Do not buy Red Dead Redemption if you want a proper remake slash remaster. Then don't buy this cash grab." The post points out that the port appears to uh, lack significant graphical and uh, frames per second enhancements and is missing the original's multiplayer mode. And of course, today's announcement also brought plenty of memes as some made jokes about the fact that Red Dead Redemption is coming to a Nintendo platform for the first time. And that is the best image of... <laughs> it's a rootin' tootin' Kirby. I know, I love it. <laughs> so I think the most egregious thing after reading all of this is that it's not on PC yet. Yeah. Like, what's that about? That's crazy. The second one is... And the fact that they have to release it for PS4 to get it to play on PS5. <laughs> See, that to me smacks like... Smells of like, this is a quick job. Put yeah, because if they are on the two older systems yeah. before we you know worry about the next gen Maybe one. there's a different port for PC, PS5. And Xbox Series doesn't sound like it needs it. No, they probably just aren't prioritizing that at all. Maybe they're like waiting to like release a patch, like a P- a proper PS5 upgrade patch mm. for it. I don't know. It just feels like they're like I I don't begrudge them for just giving us the original experience. Mm. That doesn't. Bother I'd rather me. that than nothing. Exactly. But you're getting it for fifty dollars. Yeah, it it's, it just feels like a lot of work, like a lot of money for very little work especially considering you know again the original game is available on xbox 360 for it's 30 dollars right now but it often goes on sale for a lot less and you know and that's the best way you're going to be able to play it on your series and not only that like if you have your ps3 and and or your 360 still hooked up for some reason the game but the disc itself is like easy to find and inexpensive I bet you we're uh, spoiler alert. We're gonna be at Long Island Retro Gaming uh, Expo this weekend. Check yes. it out. Um, we have no plans. We have no we plans. We're not we're just, invited. No, we're, we're just, just going. gonna show up. We'll, we'll be there probably in the afternoon. It'll for be a like when DX uh, in- attacked Monday Nitro back in the nineties. <laughs> Who were my wrestling fans at? But like, I guarantee you, I'm, we're gonna find copies of it there for like fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, ten dollars. You know, it, it like it's readily available for the old systems. I think uh, there's another tweet. By Clobril, who mm-hmm. says, in case you missed it, Red Dead Redemption runs at 4K on Xbox Series X and at 140 at 1440p on Series S via Hoochie method. I don't know what that means. I think that's the method Microsoft uses to get their games, like older games, up to code, basically. So even with this new release, it's still 
the best experience you're going to have is on Xbox Series X using the Xbox 360 version of the game. Yeah. Which is cheaper. So mm-hmm. that, I think, is a good argument for why this shouldn't be $50. Yeah. Because it's cheaper on Xbox and better on Xbox. Yeah. Uh, f- but have we, like... Whenever we hear that an old game, especially like a beloved old game, is is getting re-released on a modern system, uh, have we become so used to like the Resident Evil remakes and Dead Space and all that, that now like any time an old game comes out, it has to be a full-on remake with modern... That's what I'm trying to argue now, is that I just want the game available at all. Right. I never considered that it would be prohibitively expensive. Right. You know, I didn't, th- that didn't enter my mind when mm-hmm. I was complaining about making games available. Yeah. Cause so. like we've complained about the last of us part one coming out like mm-hmm. so soon after, like, yeah, it's been 10 years, but like still last of us is readily available. It's one of the most popular games of all time. And now you're just, you're remaking it to like bring it up to code with part two. And it's also to like tie in with the TV show for full price also. But, like, at least they did something to that game. They, like, worked on it. They added all the features from the second game yeah. into, the first, into the first one to, like, make it feel like a new game. I know you have a problem with them rehashing old stuff. It's it's not that I have a problem with them rehashing old stuff. I have a problem with the fact that it's become the only card these uh, developers are playing right now. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like, we've gotten three Resident Evil remakes in the span of, like, four years. We're getting Silent Hill 2. We're getting Metal Gear Solid 3. We got Dead Space. We got Metroid Prime, you know, remaster. People say it's a remake, but it's it's really more of like a it's a glorified remaster. You know, they they really just cleaned up the graphics in it. But mm-hmm. like they treated it like a new game. And at $50, Rockstar is essentially treating this like a new game, like a new experience, even though it's the exact same experience we got in 2010. I think what I want the most are cheap ports. Yeah. I think that's what I want the most. Because I, I I just want the games that were released back in the day to yeah. be available to still play yeah. in the way that they were intended to be played. Right. I don't mind a remake, but I'd rather just have it the way that it was. You know, So I'm still in the middle of uh, Metroid Zero Mission, my playthrough of that. Mm-hmm. I'm almost done. Um, that is a completely different game. Well, how do I put this? It's the same game as the original Metroid. It's the same map, essentially. They did make changes here and there to bring it up to modern times. Like, Crate is the proper size. He's not, like, this big. He's the proper size. Uh, and then they added, after you beat Mother Brain, there's a whole other map that you have to go through. And it's kind of mm-hmm. like a proto-Metroid Dread, where it's, like, mostly stealth-based. And that's cool. But that is not the same experience as playing Metroid on NES. Metroid on NES and Metroid Zero Mission, although they are technically the same game, are two vastly different Mm -hmm. experiences. And that's what I think gets lost when the remakes come out and essentially replace the original versions. Because while Zero Mission is... Let's be frank, a thousand times better than the original Metroid on NES. It is not Metroid on NES. It's a different game. Yeah. It's a different experience. There's some games that I want to be given the polish of a 2023 game. Yeah. You know? Like, I wanted Resident Evil 2 to be redone in a Resident Evil 4 style, yeah. and they did that. I did not want them to do that. Two more times. Yeah. <laughs> I did not want them to do Resident Evil 3 in the Resident Evil 4 style. And I didn't want them to do Resident Evil 4 in the Resident Evil 4 style. Right. So. Like, I would love a Mario 64 polish. Yeah. You know, give me some new features in that. Because yeah. cause just putting that on a Switch is just not enough. I mean, enough. honestly, Prime Remastered might have done it the best. Yeah. Because it is the same game with a graphical polish and, like, proper controls. But they also kept the bad controls in there in case you still want yeah. to play that. Yeah. Like, 
Or or uh, the, the the industry leader was the Halo Master Chief Collection. Yes, and you I press would a button and you get the old shit. Back. I would argue that still is the industry mm. standard for like how to do like a proper re-release of an old game. Yeah, I mean, but by the same token, that you can also argue like that's also a brand new game because they had to add a whole like they didn't just up like the graphics between the two are night and day. Yeah, well, I, I want the original to be available. Right. So if they're going to do like a remake, if they're going to remake the game, then you, st- I still want the old one. Like like Super Mario RPG is coming out. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, it's a complete remake. Yeah. I That's want, all, yeah. I want the old graphics. Yeah. Like I want to be able to hit a button and be able to play like mm-hmm. it was before. You know, I, I don't want to lose the part of history. Yeah. You know? And the same thing with like Sonic 3. Yeah. We lost the music. Music's yeah. gone. Music's gone to, to time. Mm-hmm. I want that. Like, yeah, like, give me that, you know? Yeah, it's, it really is. It's, it's like thinking the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake is Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. and not the original from the seventies. That's, that's what we've come to now with like what, where the games industry like currently is, you know, like, Aside from like the endless, uh, you know, sequelization of everything, now it's just like the endless remaking of everything. Uh, we had an end to our poll. Yes, uh, from forever ago. Uh, this was: uh, Did people care about achievements or trophies if they stopped using them? And sixty-four mm-hmm. percent used trophies at one point and then stopped using them recently. Right. So I guess it was an old feature that nobody cares about. That's anymore. what I figured because like they really pushed that hard. And like they also too back in the day, they gave you achievements for everything. It's like you beat a level, you get an achievement, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, um, you finish the tutorial in a minute, you get an achievement. Nowadays they don't give you, you have to actually work for your achievements. And I don't sometimes, really, yeah. uh, it was fun. Like trying to chase the achievements ba- back then or, yeah. or getting a game knowing like this one has a really easy thousand gamer score. Yeah. You know, remember I used to take games out from GameStop all uh, this Avatar game gives you a thousand gamer score in the first thirty minutes. Yeah, and we did it, and felt <laughs> f- felt. Uh, I hate shame. I hate. And there are some games I have like one achievement for, and I never played again. And I'm like, this is just taking up space. I it's embarrassing that I have this, <laughs> and you can't delete it. You can't. You can only delete games that you haven't gotten any achievements for. Sucks. I don't like it. Fix that. Um, I wanted to do another poll because the name of the stream is, would you rather have a remake or a port? We're not talking about Red Dead Redemption, but you can include that in your, in your thoughts if you want. But I'm just, the, the, the the question is just as simple as that. Would you rather them remake a game completely or just give you a port? Right. And then do we give our answer now or do we wait till afterwards? Because I don't want to like influence anybody necessarily. I think we just gave our answer okay. for a decent amount of time. Yeah. It's a little bit of a nuanced answer. Yeah. Cause I would normally say a port, but then if you if you're gonna slap a fifty dollar price tag on it, then I don't want it. Yeah, I think you know? I think some games could benefit from a remake. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Resident Evil 2, like that style of game is outdated it wouldn't fly in this day and age so like a modernized version of it that doesn't have like the pre-render backgrounds and the static cameras and like a better aiming system yeah like yeah that's un- understandable that's a game that should be remade but a game like the last of us or even red dead redemption that like was a masterpiece when it came out and for all intents and purposes is still a masterpiece you don't really need to like do any more work to it you know, just put the even Goldeneye. I know people like upset that it's just a port of the original. It's just an emulated version of the original. It's not the legendary, uh, rare remake, the 360 remake that got leaked a while ago. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm perfectly satisfied with the fact that we just got the game. You know, I don't like. I don't need like any more bells and whistles. We got the game, and at least on Xbox, it has the better control scheme. So like. I I think the with, with Goldeneye specifically, people these days who who are modern gamers will pick up Goldeneye and be like, these controls are fucking abysmal. Mm-hmm. But I think that changing those controls 
changes the game too much. It, right. It's not the same anymore. It's it, it's something completely different, and it and it's gonna be in a lot of cases too easy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I grew up with it, but like, give yourself five minutes with the controls, and you and you'll, yeah. you'll fall back into it, you know. Mm-hmm. But that that's just how you play it. You play yeah. it in a janky way. You have you have to play it like a game from the '90s, not a game from 2010. Yeah. yeah. I mean, back in that era, even like the early 2000s, we used to pick up. Uh, we played a lot of first-person shooters on consoles, and we would pick up the game. And part of the appeal of some of these games were how they controlled because yeah. there wasn't one unified control yeah. scheme and they all controlled vastly different. There's a, a reason of... why I liked Rainbow Six and there's yeah. a reason why I liked Goldeneye. There's a reason why I liked Medal of Honor. You a know? lot of first person shooters on N64, like you moved with the C buttons. Mm-hmm. Like that was your walking in your strafing. That's what, you know, your left stick now did, but that was on the right stick essentially. So, I just saw a thread about this CSGO pro mm-hmm. who plays the game now. He's like a kid who, yeah. who's a professional player now. He uses uh, mouse click right to move forward. So he's constantly just clicking? He's holding, oh. he's holding it. Yeah, he's holding it to move forward. Okay. Among other wacky things, like right. colon is to move backwards. Like right. he does all this wacky shit. He uses like the right side of the keyboard yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there's the poll. Would you rather a remake or a port? Yes. I think we're done with this topic. Yes. We can now move on to the wonderful world of the Pokemon Presents. That hey. happened this morning at nine in the morning. You are on some shit if you think I'm waking up yeah. for that. <laughs> Especially because they didn't really announce anything major. And of course they're not like I of course. Like yeah. they, they I just feel like I've been I've fallen off of Pokemon completely. Like I've been yeah. I, I try to play the new games when they happen because I do think I do like Pokemon as a as as a I don't know, group of characters as a I don't want to say franchise as an IP. Like I like, I like you like Pokemon as a concept. Yes. There you go. You like it. You like the idea. I like of, having a nice shirt with a bunch of Pikachu yeah, on it. You know, you, you like the idea of like going out, uh, collecting a bunch of critters and having them duke it out with other critters. Like yeah. that's, that's an appealing concept. It's a, you know, especially because the critters are so well-designed and cute. Um, that's what i like about yeah. it i i i enjoy like, pokemon like i enjoy a hello kitty yeah <laughs> it's like you know i i like the idea of tron i like the look of tron i like you know some of the themes in tron i don't like tron yeah. i don't like either movie <laughs> but like if i see something tron related i will check it out because i think it's kind of i think the idea is kind of cool eric says you can just do that with new york rats Make them like duke it Could. out. I mean, Zim is technically a Pokemon. Zim Just throw Zim at rats. Zim might be smaller than a rat. <laughs> yeah, I have seen him bark at New York City rats. And yeah. I'm like, what are you gonna do, yeah. dude? You're gonna lose that one. <laughs> anyway, uh, what absolute trash did we see? In this okay, uh, Game tonight? Freak's two part expansion for Scarlet and Violet kicks off on your birthday. So, happy birthday, piece of shit. I'm not playing this. Uh, with the release of the Teal Mask, the second half of the hidden treasure of Area Zero DLC, the Indigo Disc, is still slated for release this winter. Uh, Teal Mask will introduce brand new Pokemon Okie Doki, <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, Okie Doggy, uh, Monkey Dory, and aka the royal three uh and the dlc will see more than 200 pokemon who weren't previously featured in scarlet and violet added to the games pokemon company showed off a trailer for the hidden treasure of area zero during which players will explore new areas of the uh paldea region in the teal mask players will take part in a summer student student trip to the island of kitakami where players will meet pokemon species that aren't found in paldea as well as new NPCs, including a Pokemon photographer, players will be able to take selfies. Um, to sorry, players will even get a selfie stick to take better <laughs> pictures of their trainers and their Pokemon. Uh, 
That broke me. Selfie sticks are dumb and bad, and I thought they were over, and apparently they're not. So fuck this. <laughs> I have to say, this does look a lot better than the last trailer. The last yeah. trailer looked horrible. It was like this this empty, like like void of land, and there was there, there was really nothing else to to, to the to the um, trailer. Right. This looks like there's like things, things in the do. world. Yeah. The frame rate isn't that bad. Yeah. This Pokemon right here, what the fuck is that? Is that the Kosciuszko? I guess. What is that? I don't know. Um, players will head to the Blueberry Academy for a mostly underwater school that houses four art, uh, artificial biomes filled with a variety of Pokemon. Uh, players will also face a tough new Elite Four, Lacey, Crispin, uh, Amsery, and uh, Drayton, who use new Pokemon Arcaludon, uh, which evolves from Duraludon. Okay. Wow. Also, Mew and Mewtwo will be uh, featured in a new event. You now, can, as you can get Mew and Mewtwo. As much as I shit all over Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I'm 1,000% booting up and typing in the code, get your Mew, yeah. to get my Mew. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need to get the Mew. Well, yeah. Because also, you'll probably be able to transfer that out into other games, too. Yeah. So, it... it Get your get your Mew. So when Pokemon is good again, you can transfer. Yeah, over I'll have a Mew. Yeah, hopefully if they'll allow it to be in the other game. Yeah, Pokemon doesn't like to do that anymore. No, but you know, like the only way to get the Mew back in the day was during an event like this. So you got to yeah. capitalize whenever. There's or an event you know, like this. have a friend who had an action replay to unlock it, and then you trade with them. That's what we did. Yes. So uh, is Mew available right now? I think he is. Uh. Also, is the O a zero? Because that's dumb. Uh, Mew and Mewtwo will be featured in a new event called uh, Get Mew and Mewtwo, where players will be able to battle Mewtwo with the Mightiest Mark. Starting now and running through September 18th, players uh. can get Mew by entering the code in the Mystery Gift menu. Mewtwo will be appearing in a special Terror Raid battle from September 1st to the 17th. The O in your is a zero. Get your Mew, but the O is a zero. No, I don't like that. I don't like that either. Okay. Uh, next up, the Pokemon Company showed a new trailer for Detective Pikachu Returns, focusing on the sequel's gruff, tough talking, uh, powered by coffee Pikachu and his pal Tim. Um, the trailer shows Detective Pikachu getting assistance from his fellow Pokemon, including an Arcanine that can literally sniff out clues and a, a Dramatean that can open up new areas of Rhyme City by smashing stuff. That'll be available October 6th. This game was clearly st- started for the 3ds yeah and they just never even tried to make it to, like to capitalize switch on the yeah. switch yeah they were probably like oh we don't have to optimize this for the 3ds anymore all right yeah all right we'll just put whatever garbage yeah this looks like a disney game <laughs> <laughs> it's probably going for that like style yeah it looks like dreamlight valley yeah um there was one line in the last trailer that i loved it was it was like pikachu being like don't even talk to me until i've had my coffee yeah <laughs> I just it was really good. uh next oh po- it, it was so much for my morning coffee oh yeah <laughs> so stupid. uh next pokemon go M- more paladin region pokemon are coming to pokemon go uh niantic and the pokemon company tease that the starters from scarlet and violet are headed to the mobile game uh starting in september i kind of want to play pokemon go again I opened it up the other day, just a million notifications, and I closed right I'm afraid to open it up again, because I know I'm going to be in the same boat as you. Yeah. I have the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, okay. because of Pokemon Sleep. That game's dumb. Uh, so it makes me want to try Pokemon Go again, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, Pokemon Path to the Peak, a new animated series based on the trading card game. Uh, Path to the Peak is coming soon. The series focuses on trainer Ava and her partner Pokemon Oddish on their journey to be uh on their journey of competitive Pokemon trading card gameplay. Um, so so wait, this is in the Pokemon universe, but they're playing cards. Yes, I don't like that. Yeah, that's I, weird. I was about to say I'm interested in this because the art style looks kind of cool. Yeah, but also it would be cool if this was just in like this world using pokemon cards right you know that would be cool why has it got to be in the pokemon world but they're not using pokemon they're using cards i don't know but uh the first episode will debut on august 11th and it will be free on youtube okay that's cool so you don't have to pay anything we like that 
Uh, there's another animated series based on Scarlet and Violet called Pokemon uh, Paldean Winds, which will focus on a youthful drama of several Academy students as they come into their own at the Paldean Academy. It will be a web series that will span four episodes and debuts on September 6th. So this is an offshoot. This, this is, is not, another thing, yeah. This is not the main Pokemon Correct. Because they also have the main Pokemon anime. Yeah. Uh, trading card games Stadia 2 are coming to Switch Online. We said that already. Ozymandias in the chat says, yeah, I was breaking winds too. Ah, farts. Farts are funny. Pokemon Cafe Remix, which I, I had on my phone. Yeah. I deleted it. Okay. Uh, Unite and Masters EX. Unite... Cafe Remix, not about it. Unite wasn't about it. Mm -hmm. Masters EX, actually not a bad game. Really? I played that for a decent amount when it came out because it was basically just a Pokemon game on the phone and that's where Pokemon should be. It should just be <laughs> on the phone because you don't There's no. The, the, you don't need any reaction time. It's just menus. Yeah. Why can't a regular mainline Pokemon game be on the phone? Nintendo, that's why. Yeah. And this was this Pokemon Masters EX seemed like a mobile developer got the the Pokemon IP and they were like, How close can we make this to a regular Pokemon game without them getting mad? Yeah. Instead of Pokemon, you'll collect trainers. <laughs> and that's it. And then yeah. they and then they made a Pokemon game. Uh so Tessiguri, the mimicry Pokemon that looks like sushi, is coming to Pokemon Cafe Remix. Uh, Mewtwo is now part of Pokemon Unite. Uh, he will be available uh, on August 17th. Uh, and Pokemon Masters EX is bringing its first sync pair from the Paldia region, uh, Nimona and Poamat. They will be available on August 16th. Yeah, I, I of all of this, I like Masters. So okay. that's, that's kind of worth it. Cool. So there's your Pokemon Presents. Lottie. Every Pokemon Presents is like something about the main game, something about like one of the retro games, and just a whole lot of crap. Yeah, I like more about the retro games. <sighs> yeah. I just... We usually don't get anything about the retro yeah. games. Usually they're, they're doing a remake, mm -hmm. or it's going to Nintendo Switch Online. But that's only a recent thing, the Nintendo yeah. Switch Online stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Pokemon is like so much more than video games now that like they don't care about the video games anymore. Absolutely. Or like the video games that they do put out, it's like, you know, secondary. Like video game Pokemon is Pokemon video games are the secondary focus of the Pokemon mm -hmm. franchise. Now. They're they're gonna run into the same problems that have happened with other industries. You're you're you started off as video games and mm -hmm. you're getting all of your ideas from the video games. You have now grown bigger than video games. But you're going to run out of content because the video games is where it all started from and where you got all of your fans from and stuff. This is basically what happened, you know, with superhero comics. That's what I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. drawing the, the relationship with. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You you stopped caring about the source material. You're like, nah, fuck it. We don't even need you anymore. We're yeah. bigger than you now. And now you're like, oh, please give us more ideas. Yeah. <laughs> we need more things. Yeah. Instead of using your wider audience, like use the anime, use the movies, use yeah. the plushies or whatever to get them to play the games, which is the reason it all started in the first mm -hmm. place. Use your movies to read the comic books, yeah. to get people into the comic books and stuff. So, yeah. I will say, this is we're talking about that, uh, not to start anything, but like since James Gunn has taken over the DC films, they've started putting in bumpers saying re uh, experience the comic book and they'll show pictures of the comics you should read oh. if you want to know the movie and they've said that since james gunn has taken over sales of like the trades for the movies that are gonna be for the comics that are gonna be turned into movies have skyrocketed and even comics that are now out of print i've like seen sales skyrocket so it works <laughs> it, it it has to keep these people as fans. Yeah. In the case of like DC, the movies aren't, do aren't no, doing, they doing they a need good all the job of that. Get. Yeah. But like when you Marvel, I think it's hard to get those people to read the comics. I think that's so. like too nerdy for them. <sighs> no, I think the problem is they they show so much lip service. It's all lip service. Mm -hmm. They'll say like, "Yeah, we took inspiration from this comic, and that's it." Mm -hmm. 
Whereas, like, when James Gunn made the announcement of, like, the movies that are going to be under the, the new wave of DC films, he actually talked about, like, the book and why that's going to be adapted. And I think that helps. Yeah. Instead of just saying, like, oh, we're taking inspiration from this comic or gushing about Stan Lee for, like, 20 minutes, even though he didn't create most of the characters. <laughs> so, I think that helps. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to say thank you to some people. I think. Mackenzie, thank you for the 14 months. My boyfriend and I are coming to Long Island Retro Gaming Expo this weekend. Hey! What's the best place to get dinner? Hmm. Around there? There's there's not a lot over there. You have to, like, do some traveling. Like, if you go, like, 20 minutes in one way i don't remember which way <laughs> but like you'll run into like some restaurant there's a burger king there's a sonic uh there's a Mo's. green turtle there's a green turtle that's very good down that road. oh that's different than the tilted kilt yes yeah that's hooters yeah it used to be a hooters but now it's a gr- now it's green turtle so it's family oh, friendly. okay yeah. i'm very confused um there's that burger place we always go to yeah i fr- what's the name of it burger city okay that's like a that's like that's fine that's it, an old it's like a fast food. It's a thing. fast food place, but it's, it's like a old local, fashioned. Yeah. It's a local old fashioned fast food. That's thing. not really like dinner. That's like lunch in between the convention and stuff. Yeah, and it's close to the convention, yeah. so you can leave, go to there, and, and go back. Is the Zorn's restaurant still there? Because if you I don't, want, no, I think it's. I don't think they're in East Meadow anymore. No, no oh. yeah, I think they're all the way down in like Beth Page. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of great stuff in that one area. It's a lot of chains, yeah. honestly. Like, if, if you're okay with chains, like, you're good. But, like, <laughs> there's not, like, there's nothing I would call, like, local cuisine, like, in that area. No. I'm trying to think. This was the I other... never go over there for food. Yeah. <laughs> there's also the other side, which is, like, by the mall. There's Q Ramen is a new ramen place that's in Garden City, which is close to the convention, yeah. which is very good. But good luck in the seat there because it's yeah. going to be packed and it's, it's uh, very small in there. Otherwise, yeah, there's there's not. You're kind of screwed. Mm-hmm. Not much good stuff. Um, where else are we? G Blades, thank you for the two months. Hello, Wolf Bros. Hello. Hello. Fox Houndra, thank you for the raid. Kiriako, thank you for the 19 months. Uh, Twitch should have an auto resub option when using Prime because I've for sure uh, waited a while wants a while to sub to nobody oh was sub to nobody for a while uh yeah it's very dumb. yeah i don't know I, why they do that it's just going to i mean they i know why they do that because they don't want to pay out the subscription right. um so yeah that sucks but it, it, it is what it is uh dab queen thank you for the raid and majin jameson thank you for the 18 months in both of your opinions on the switch which is the best pokemon on the switch this is uh, going to get me in trouble. Let's go is the best Pokemon. <laughs> I'm not even fucking around. I don't think Sword and Shield are terrible. Mm-hmm. I just feel like they're too stuck in their ways. They were fine. The DLC of them made me realize I didn't like them. Right. As far as I know, what was the remakes? Brilliant Diamond and... Yeah. or whatever those but, were bad i did not like those i've heard see i've heard from like people who actually care about pokemon that those those were also fine and the thing like i heard the opposite because it, it i i they were also that was a porthouse job that they just it didn't really seem to care much about well that's the thing like you know with the pokemon game, like they're not the, we haven't gotten anything like exceptional they've just been fine yeah. and like yeah. yeah i would love like I mean, I, I want some of the old games back. Yeah. But if they fucking put, like, Heart Gold on the Switch, yeah. that would blow people's minds. Or even, minds. like, Leaf Green and Fire Red. Yeah. yeah. The big rumor is that the next one's going to... The next remake is going to be Black and White. Yeah. Which would also be sick, because I, I mm-hmm. would like to try those games out. But if they remake it in the way that they did uh, Pearl, I'm, I'm not going to yeah. be happy with that. Um. Okay we got more news to talk about. we do have a lot more news to talk about uh 
let's blast through this Switch 2 nonsense because I talked way too much about this already. Okay, uh, dev kits for Nintendo's next console are now with key partner studios with a launch plan for next year, uh, sources tell VGC. According to multiple people with knowledge of Nintendo's next-gen plan, uh, console plans, the company is likely to release new hardware during the second half of 2024 to ensure that it is has ample stock available on day one and to avoid the kind of shortages seen with the PS5 and Xbox Series. Uh, although specific details on the console are being kept closely guarded, VGC, um, the people VGC spoke to indicated that the next-gen console will be able to use uh, be used in portable mode similar to the Switch. Two sources um, suggested that the console could launch with an LCD screen instead of the premium OLED screen in order to bring costs down, especially considering the increased storage needed for higher fidelity games. Current Switches um, come with the 32 gigs of internal storage. While many current gen PS, uh, PlayStation and Xboxes uh, are over 100 gigs, uh, like its pro like its predecessor, the new uh, Nintendo console will accept physical games via a cartridge slot. Uh, other details, such as backwards compatibility support, remains unclear. Nintendo has said it wants to convert uh, many of the Switch's 100 million plus user base as possible to its next system, although some third-party publishers are said to have expressed concern that legacy support for Switch games could negatively affect sales of next-gen titles. Pause. That sentence right there, that's why you don't see a lot of old games get re-released or just made available because companies don't care about the old stuff. They just want you to keep buying the new stuff. What they don't realize is that without access to the old stuff, there's no incentive to create and experience new stuff. You don't think that having your entire library available from all of history will even out eventually. And, and, <laughs> imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine if when the Robert Pattinson Batman movie came out, you just couldn't get Tim Burton's Batman. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine if HBO, they, I mean, they could because it's Warner Brothers. They just removed every single Batman movie off of Max so that you can only experience uh, the Pattinson Batman when it came out in theaters. Imagine that. It would be insane. I'd like to see some numbers for, like, example, Red Dead Redemption. Like, we wouldn't be talking about Red Dead Redemption right now if it weren't for the port. Yeah. But how much money have they made since the launch of the Xbox One till now on sales of Red Dead Redemption? You know? Yeah. I'm assuming that that would even out to whatever the new one's going to sell yeah. for. Because these ports of old games, they don't really, like, hit gangbuster numbers. Yeah. You know, like the Doom port? Everyone was talking about the Doom port for the Switch. Yeah. It sold like 70,000 copies. Yeah. It was like incredibly low, but everyone was talking about how revolutionary it was yeah. because the port was so good. So again, making games available, I think, is in everybody's best interest. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo did not immediately respond to VGC's request for a comment on the story. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that's like the big... Everything, everything else in the article is saying like, oh, yeah, it's it's coming next year. Mm -hmm. All signs point to next year. So, um, I I mean, I, uh, I'm i on board with all of this. I think it all makes sense. I yeah. think there's definitely dev kits out there. That just only makes sense. Definitely dev What, what I will say is surprising is that uh, it looks like it's going to launch with an LCD screen rather than an OLED screen. So I'm trying to pull up a tweet by Luigi Blood, who's another uh -huh. like Nintendo insider. Uh, not really a Nintendo insider. They really just data mine stuff, but yeah. they have a lot of good insight. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things they said, which made a lot of sense, is that um, these rumors are most likely based off of a dev kit that a developer has. Right. The reason why this news pissed me off so much is because we learned about it the week prior from a Spanish developer, which we assume right. is the Metroid developer. Mm -hmm. um, all of this was corroborated with that. Like, like it was that leak. And then all of these news outlets were like, yeah, it's true. We heard the same thing. Yeah. So this is rehashed news basically to me. Um, what Luigi blood said was that this is based off of probably what the dev kits are yeah. and the dev kits aren't necessarily indicative of what we're going to end up getting. No dev kits are usually spec higher than what the retail version uh, yeah. is. Yeah. But also they, it might just not have an L it might not have an OLED. Yeah. It's possible. I don't, it's possible the next switch might be OLED. Yeah. It just doesn't have it in the dev kit for some reason. It's possible that the next switch is LCD. 
You know, yeah. like it could be, it, we, this doesn't really tell us much of anything. It could, it, it could go either way still. Another thing uh, was that, uh, this was directly from Luigi Blood, was that um, uh, they're saying that the dev kits don't have a form of backwards compatibility, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, that's not indicative of what the new Switch right. is going to be because they have openly talked about how they want to make it yeah. at least backwards compatible in the sense of of, of how the uh, account system works. Mm -hmm. So also other specs like the internal memory and stuff. We, we know that the old Switch dev kit had more RAM than the, than the Switches have yeah. because like you said, they're usually spec higher. So uh, tech... Take all of this with a grain of salt, other than it just makes sense that a new Switch is right over the horizon. Yeah. So, and I mean, they're speculating next year. It could also be delayed. Mm -hmm. Like, without an official announcement, we don't know for sure. All we know for sure is that people have dev kits and yes. that, that games are being worked on. That's as much as I'm willing to 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 bet all of my money on. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, next news: PS5 sales exceed 40 million. Uh, in a blog, big. in a blog post from Jim Ryan, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, we launched PlayStation 5 in November 2020, and the world was in a strange and diff uh, different place than when we announced it in 2019. Despite the unprecedented, unprecedented challenges of COVID, our team and partners worked diligently to deliver the PS5 on time. We continued to face headwinds with the pandemic, and it took months for supply chains to normalize so we could have inventory to keep up with demand. For more months than I can remember, we kept thanking our community for their patience while working through the issues. But now the PS5 supply is well stocked, and we are seeing that pent up demand finally being met. Uh, with the cons with the support of PS fans, we have reached the milestone of 40 million PlayStation consoles sold. Uh, sorry, we have reached a milestone of 40 million PlayStation 5 consoles sold through to gamers since launch. Thank you so much for for the thank you so much to our community of gamers. Without you, this would have been an impossible task. Uh, that is sold through as of July 16th, 2023. That's what the asterisk is for. PS5 launched with the best catalog of games in our history and the momentum of great content to keep uh, that keeps getting stronger. From innovative indies to AAA blockbusters, there are more than 2,500 PlayStation 5 games available now. And it has never been a better time to experience the PS5 in the last two months as we've seen incredible new games including Final Fantasy 16, Diablo 4, and Street Fighter 6. Since the launch, all of which are on other platforms, are they? Yeah, not? <laughs> well, not uh, Final Fantasy. Okay. Uh, since the launch of the PS5, players have been enjoying a selection of great games that illustrate uh, how games are as vast and creative as any other entertainment medium. Here are forty. Here are the top forty games that have been uh, voted on by PlayStation players. Uh, I don't think these are in any order because Astro's Playroom is not is at the top. I mean, that's my vote. Yeah. For. Uh... We get what, what top it, it's, four, just top just the best games. On these the are these are the top uh, PlayStation Five games as voted on by the community. This is in alphabetical order. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, yeah, Bug Snacks. I wanted to like it because yeah. it's such a cool concept, but it wasn't that good. Mm. Um, Astro's Playroom might be my favorite because it's a yeah. banger of a game and uh, it's an exclusive. Yeah, all of these other games are great, but but they're not exclusive. Well, yeah. is Returnal on here? No, it's not. Why is Returnal not on here? That I because that's also one of the best games. Yeah. Because what what's on Those here? Those are the two. Those are my yeah. top two right there. Bug Snacks is not exclusive. Modern Warfare Two not exclusive. Cult of the Lamb, De uh, Dead Space, Death Spider Man's Store. on here, right? But that's also a PS4 game. Miles Morales. Spider Man's not. Oh, Returnal is on here. Oh, Spider Man's on here. They're yeah. both on here. Returnal okay, is I see Returnal. We're okay. good. We're good. Uh, yeah, Spider-Man Miles Morales. That was a launch title, but it was also on PS4. And it's now on PC. Right. W when I'm thinking of, like, best game on PlayStation, I'm thinking of games that are best played there. You right. Know? Okay. Um, and oh, Death's Door is on there. That's good. Yeah. Like, Hades, that's, I don't think that's best played on PlayStation. Yeah. That's probably best played on the switch because you have the versatility of taking it mm -hmm. wherever the hell you want um and you're not losing any quality of of gameplay uh astro's playroom you gotta play that on yeah. on, on playstation uh so yeah 40 million systems 
despite having terrible stock the first few years. Terrible stock, yeah. Uh, that's that's great. That's great. I yeah. think they're on a pretty massive trajectory. Yeah. I didn't put it in. I didn't put it in the key, but they're actually have having a sale for the first time ever. It's um four fifty for the PlayStation Five with disc. Oh shit! Yeah, that's a good deal. That is a big sign that there's a refresh coming. Yeah, <laughs> of course. That's what that means. That's not the version I recently just pre-ordered. Mm-hmm. I pre-ordered the much more expensive Spider-Man Two version. <laughs> I saw some so so. Switch is on the verge of being the highest selling system of all time. Shockingly, they yes. need to sell another thirty million, yeah. which is going to be hard in its last days, yeah. unless they also do a sale. Yeah. So I'm thinking that same goddamn bundle they do every Black the Friday with bundle. the Mario Kart. For the love of God, make it fifty dollars off. Yeah. Please, for the love of God, give us a deal on yeah. that, and then maybe you'll you'll squeeze by that extra thirty million. Mm-hmm. Or else PlayStation is going to come out with a new version and they're going to yeah. sell another $40 million. <laughs> All right, Nicktoons All-Star Brawl uh, two. 2. Why? Uh, we just got the other one, didn't de- we? <laughs> Developers uh, Ludiosity and Fair Play Labs and publisher Game Mill Entertainment announced Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, the sequel to 2021's hit four-player Smash Brothers clone, uh, is that was due 2021? out. Yeah. Oh my god. Due out later this year for Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, and PC via Steam. Game Mill promises, in short, a bigger, better, and more. Uh, more characters, more stages, more modes. Uh, plus a new campaign, fully uh, full crossplay for all platforms, voice acting for every playable character, new mini games, improved graphics, and more. Take a look at the announcement trailer above and the first screenshots of the image gallery below. That was the big deal with the first one was that there was no voice acting at all. Well, that's a big deal yeah. when it's Nickelodeon All Stars, you know, characters with who are famous for how they sound. Yeah, and just and, just like the game was half assed, like yeah. they're trying to be like a Smash Brothers knockoff, but you, they're re- everybody suddenly realized just how well developed Smash Brothers yeah. was. But it's even like, not recreatable, like little things like voice acting like that adds to the presentation mm-hmm. of the game like yeah. every character in smash has you know audio and they realized this and then they added voice lines later on yeah. in like an update but it's too late by yeah. then uh in the single player campaign you'll be aiming to stop danny phantom bad guy vlad plasmus from conquering the nickelodeon universe uh gameplay in all modes will also now include new supers which, uh, as the name suggests, are ultra-powerful moves that can swing the match in your favor if used strategically. Uh, so the fact that Danny, a Danny Phantom villain is uh, the campaign bad guy is means that this game is going to be great. Because Danny Phantom, best Nick Toon. Do not fight me. Uh, the first game was bad. Right. Yes. I have zero faith this is going to be any good. I feel like, just from what I've seen from like the trailers and stuff, it looks like it will be better. Yeah, sure. They'll learn from some mistakes. But, like, I mean, anything will be better. You can't do a Smash Brothers knockoff. You cannot. You cannot do it. I don't want to say you can't, but you can't expect to be Smash Brothers, period. Like, yeah. you're going you're gonna to be different, and you have to embrace your differences yeah. and, like, try something unique. Because, like, you know, a traditional fighting game, they're all based on Street Fighter 2. Like, that style. But they all do things differently yeah. to set themselves Even Street apart. Fighter. Even yeah. Street Fighter, when they release a new version, they do something different. Exactly. Yeah. You can't you can't just do Smash Brothers, but with Nicktoons. You have to do your unique spin on it. You know? And I think that's where a lot of these games, like, fall short. Ryan in the chat says Brawlhalla did the best job. I was going to say Brawlhalla. Yeah. But... The reason why that was such a big deal was because it was an indie game yeah. and it was cheap. You can't take an IP like Nickelodeon and just do like a Brawlhalla situation yeah. and think that it's going to work. But also, Brawlhalla was more polished yeah. than even was Bra- this Brawlhalla, bullshit. Ubisoft published that, didn't they? I think eventually. I think they picked it up eventually. Okay. But but I, I think it was independent for a long time. 
Rivals of Aether is the best Smash like. Maybe I'm getting the two confused. Rivals oh, yeah. of Aether. No, Brawlhalla was developed by Blue Mammoth Games and acquired by Ubisoft. Mm-hmm. And then they started dumping in some Ubisoft. Yeah, like, like Rayman's, uh, Rayman's in there. I know the Assassin's Creed. Rivals of Aether looks very good, but uh, you can't even do the Smash Brothers formula without interesting characters. Without, yeah. it's it's like copying Pokemon but not having the cute characters. You know what I mean? Right. You can't do Smash Brothers without Mario. You know, like it's not gonna, it, it doesn't work. Right. And also all of the polish of a of a triple A AAA studio with with hundreds of thousands of hours and Sakurai at the helm being yeah. a being a, a dictator. Right. <laughs> It's not as easy as everybody makes it out to be. Yeah. So, no, I will not be getting Nick to his <laughs> All-Star Brawl 2. Uh, Square commits to more Xbox support. Uh, oh, this gives you bullet points. Nice. Uh, what you need to know, Final Fantasy XIV had a major event in Las Vegas today. Oh, sorry, Dad, we missed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, where new uh, Dawn Trail expansion was announced unexpectedly. Xbox lead Phil Spencer was on stage two and revealed that Final Fantasy XIV will finally come to Xbox after years of waiting. Additionally, Square Enix CEO uh, Takashi Kiryu announced that uh, what were pos- announced uh, that where possible, the firm will bring up more Final Fantasy games to Xbox, and that Square Enix has been skipping Xbox repeatedly in recent years due uh, to exclusivity deals with PlayStation. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we all kind of assumed that. Yeah, uh, that's this is interesting coming off of the back of us assuming that Sony was acquiring Square. Yeah, and now we're seeing like the opposite. <laughs> well, we we saw uh, that before Microsoft decided they were going to acquire Activision, they thought about buying Square, mm-hmm. uh, and now it seems like they're actively working on a partnership, which you know historically Microsoft has struggled in Japan. Mm-hmm. And now that they have like a committed relationship with one of the biggest publishers in Japan is like a good sign for them. I think it'll also help with their, you know, their library of games. Cause they don't have like all the final fantasy games and all the classic Square Enix games on their system. I'm sure they want to add some final fantasy and dragon quest games to game pass. I'm sure it's also a lot cheaper for Microsoft to just have a partnership yeah. and not spend mm-hmm. a billion dollars and acquire a studio. Mm-hmm. So, that's cool. Uh, that happened. It. Why did they have a conference in Vegas? I think they were they were just announcing uh, expansions for. It was a major event for Final Fantasy fourteen. That's weird to just have a live, a random live showcase like that. Yeah. And they just had Evo. Yeah. It was a. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 Fan Festival. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's what it was. I didn't know that they had that. Yeah. And either. it was at that same time as this friggin' Evo. Yeah. Um, we had a poll before, and that was, <laughs> would you rather have a remake or a port? And yeah. 64% said remake. Huh. That's interesting. Interesting. I guess a lot of those people assumed they would be the same price. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Okay, Jedi Survivor coming to last gen systems. Oh no! Did yeah. they fix the current gen systems? <laughs> uh, f- though he had nothing to announce. Uh, Andrew Wilson sang the praises of Respawn's uh, Jedi Focus series. Uh, f- is this giving me? Oh, here we go. Um, Elshon Azar, CEO Andrew Wilson, in a recent earnings call said he would love. Love to see another entry in the developer Respawn's uh, Star Wars Jedi series, although he didn't have any official announcements to make at this time. When asked during a Q&A portion of EA's first quarter earnings call how the publisher would approach the Star Wars franchise in the future in regards to live services and ongoing engagement, Wilson said EA didn't have anything to announce at the time. However, Wilson said EA has a great partnership with Disney and Lucasfilm and has incredible success with games like uh, Battlefront, uh, Galaxy of Heroes, and the Jedi series. Uh... Where's the part that I'm that is actually here? Oh, okay. Lasting impact will be helped by the announcement that during the earnings call, that Jedi Survivor will be coming to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. 
With While no release date was given, Wilson said the development team was committed to bringing the experience to last-gen consoles. Jedi Survivor uh, released two positive reviews earlier this year with PlayStation 5 version sporting an average of 85 on Metacritic. Uh, yeah, so it's coming to last-gen systems, apparently. Uh, I think this was talked about already, but uh, I don't think there was a date or anything. Um but now we now we now it's first certain. Yeah, uh, I think people were skeptical because of just how bad it yeah performed. I'm surprised on, on current gen systems. Oh, what the hell? That I read the wrong article. The one I opened linked to something different. The hell? That's weird. I have Jedi Survivor coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, I read I read something completely different. I clicked oh. the same link, but it opened up a different article. Oh, okay, that is weird. Uh, the announcement from Respawn EA today would uh, bring Jedi Survivor to older consoles. Probably comes as a surprise to some. In February, game director Stig um, Asu- Asumison told uh, Play Magazine that Respawn was skipping the PS4 and Xbox One so the company could take full advantage of the superior processor and memory of the PS5 and Xbox series. Um, it was said that Respawn was hoping to achieve true next-gen experience for Jedi Survivor. Respawn did not say when Jedi Survivor would launch on PS4 and Xbox One or provide any further details on how this game uh, might be different from the PS5 and Xbox Series versions. Uh, Jedi Survivor is not the only first current-gen only game from EA, as the company launched EA Sports PGA Tour only on PS5 and Xbox Series uh, in April. Uh, f- yeah. So it was just, it was there in the early stages of bringing it to PS4 and Xbox One. Okay. So they previously said they weren't going to They weren't going to do it. it. Yeah. And now they're doing it. Yeah. So, it's interesting that they're doing it that way. You know, usually you do the last gen version, and then you put it. I guess they did the, the next gen version. I'm I, I'm under the impression that like peop, uh, companies are putting out the next gen versions because they can't. They're having a really hard time optimizing for last gen. Mm-hmm. We saw this with Gotham Knights. They canceled the PS4 and Xbox One versions because they couldn't get the, those games optimized for the last gen. So they needed. The processing power of the current yeah. gen to do so and those games ran like trash on the current gen yeah it seems like they're having trouble optimizing it uh so they're like fuck it we'll just use the power of the console to pick up the slack on the on the yeah on the bullshit right uh next microsoft now selling a place in parts for controllers this is big deal this is big news i like this a lot uh, Microsoft is taking a huge leap into the world of self-repair by offering replacement parts for Xbox Game Pads along with downloadable instructions and step-by-step tutorial videos, which should save gamers some cash in the long run. This program impacts the standard Xbox wireless controller models and the Elite Series 2 wireless controller. So here's my problem. Uh, you go to their website, you got the replacement parts. They also have like videos and yeah, uh, yeah. them showing you opening the thing. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. That's what we need, it, especially for a controller as expensive as an Elite controller, a uh-huh. $200 controller. If something breaks, I should be able to fix it. Mm-hmm. It's not so hard to pick up a freaking screwdriver. You usually don't have to do any soldering. Why don't they just make these parts available, especially for something as modular as an Xbox controller? You go to the website. Here's the stuff. I don't want to chat. Get <laughs> away from me. No, thank you. The board, 50 bucks. That's kind of cool that you can buy a whole new board. Right. Uh, replacement buttons, twenty four dollars, and you can buy black ones or white ones. That's yeah. cool, fine, whatever. Replacement motor assembly, sixty dollars. That's kind of a lot of money. That's more than the brain. And then two top shelf, two top cases, and that's it. No thumbsticks, which is the most uh, breakable part. Actually, no. I think the motor assembly comes with the thumbsticks. Yeah. Oh, because they're soldered in, so they're not yeah. going to want you to replace that on your own. Okay, that. So and I guess this is all you need then. But I guess you need a bottom case the, too. The buttons, uh, the button pack comes with like the thumbstick, like the tops. Does it come too? with the membranes? Those are important. I don't know. I think you're overlooking, like the 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 bigger issue here. Okay, it's that the replacement parts are very expensive. Mm-hmm. Like a replacement, a replacement input uh, PCB for the Xbox wireless controller is thirty four dollars. 
Whereas for like ten dollars more, you can just buy a new controller on sale. Yeah, well, I'm specifically looking at the elite stuff because elite right. controllers are expensive. Right. And if that breaks, then you're just fucked. Yeah. And in that case, if you want to replace the PCB, fifty bucks for an almost two hundred dollar controller, that's like not so bad. But yeah. you're right, thirty four dollars for a fifty dollar controller is yeah. really not. And it, like a deal, if you have to replace more than one thing, like you know twenty two dollars for the button, if you have to replace buttons and the 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 motor assembly, just buy a new controller. Yeah, like it doesn't. I'm not so mad about the prices for the elite stuff, because. If you need to replace a thumbstick, you're getting the whole unit that'll be an easier to drop in thing for sixty dollars. Uh-huh. Fine, whatever. But you're missing membranes. You're missing the back of the case. Like there's still stuff that you can't get. Yeah, that's kind of super annoying. Also, uh, give us better. Th- I, I, I just I'm assuming the next Xbox controller model that they make will have modular thumbsticks and stuff, similar yeah. to like what the Steam Deck has, where you just unplug it. Um. So this is cool, and I'm glad that they're like uh, giving you options. It's a step in the right direction yeah. for sure. It's just because remember we didn't have this a yeah. week ago. Um, but they, yeah, there's really not much in in the way of options. Yeah. On the complete opposite side, I forgot I wanted to talk about this. Uh, Valve is now they they now have a stock of refurbished Steam decks, and. For a 64 gigabyte, the base model, yeah, three hundred and twenty dollars. That's good. That is a good deal. Yeah, I bought one. Really? I'm gonna uh, do a video on it probably to see like what's different about it, because that's like it's already it's a little hard to recommend a Steam Deck to people because yeah, it's a decent amount of money. Um, but three hundred and twenty dollars for yeah is for what you're getting. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be able to play PC games finally. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. For all of the stuff a Steam Deck can do, that's such a good deal. And it's so easy to put more uh a bigger SSD in there. Yeah. So yeah, that's th- this is this is fantastic. I mean, a a refurbished 256 gig one is 419. Mm. New is 529. Yeah. So that's like $100 right there. Yeah, that's over $100 off. Uh, they say each certified refurbished Steam Deck has been thoroughly tested to the same high standards as our retail units. Every device goes through a complete factory reset, software update, and an extensive examination involving over 100 tests at one of Valve's facilities. Among the tests are all controller inputs, the audio system, the screen, and internals. Battery health is also assessed to ensure proper functionality and longevity. The Steam Deck hasn't been out for that long, so Mm -hmm. battery health shouldn't really be an issue. Yeah. One of the reasons I think this is such a good deal is because of how modular the Steam Deck is already. So if there is actually a problem mm-hmm. with your refurbished system, it shouldn't be hard to fix no. on your own. Yeah. And they sell replacement parts through iFixit. Uh, you, the thumbsticks are some of the easiest to replace. And uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Even if something's used and people have used it before, Yeah, the first thing to go is usually the thumbsticks. So you can just put another one in there. So another thing that's not here is that uh, they will sell refurbished ones at GameStop, but they're GameStop refurbished. Uh, they're not going to be as good as the yeah. uh, as the Valve refurbished. But again, it's modular. So if you get like some weird deal, like you have like a discount on used stuff at GameStop, it might it might be worth it. Yeah. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 has been announced. I didn't see this. Yes. Uh, we all we got was basically a quick teaser trailer. Uh, the ultimate threat awaits, Activision said in the teaser video. Modern Warfare Three will launch November tenth. The game is expected to release across Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. Uh, this is just the beginning of the Modern Warfare Three announcement plan. So keep checking back for more as we learn more about the game. Uh, it's expected that Activision will confirm more details about the game in the days ahead uh, before an even bigger reveal on August 17th. Sledgehammer Games is reportedly leading development of Modern Warfare 3 with support of Activision's network of Call of Duty development studios, a.k.a. every other studio in Activision's uh, portfolio. Mm-hmm. Uh, operators, guns, and purchases from Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone will reportedly carry over to this new game. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I find this interesting... Because 
usually it's like modern warfare even back in the day was modern warfare infinity ward made modern warfare then like treyarch would make a game and like this would be something different and nowadays sledgehammer would also make a game be something different and then infinity war would come back with the next modern warfare we got modern warfare 2 last year so activision is already following it up with the next modern warfare game yeah how does that work <laughs> Was Sledgehammer working on something different before? They're like, no, you have to do Modern Warfare 3. I'm a, They knew they were going to make Modern Warfare 3. Right. Sure. But usually Infinity War makes that game. Now yeah. Sledgehammer is making this one. I think Sledgehammer is a lot different now. I, th- I think yeah. all of these studios have like become one big There's um, just one big like, blob. Yeah, homunculus. Of, yeah. yeah. So I don't think it really matters anymore. Mm. I'd like to see the differences in Warzone because I really don't like this generation of warzone i'd right. like to see some changes i'd also like to see the mobile version apparently there is a battle royale in call of duty mobile but it's not warzone okay. it's different so i don't know i'd have to try that um cool i don't know i'm, I'm only interested in warzone so I'll, right. I'll see what happens with that uh you can play as Nicki minaj now i saw that yeah now my question is is the hitbox on her ass gonna be any different <laughs> than other characters if they want is it going to be worse to play as Nicki minaj they always the talk about how realistic like the game is and so yeah i would imagine it would be <laughs> yeah um they also have they had uh characters from that the boys oh yeah one of the big deals in the original Warzone was this cat i forgot her, was it rose the rose skin mm-hmm. this character rose that was like an all black tactical woman mm-hmm. and uh everybody played as her because it was hard to see her because she was in all black tactical right. outfit and the boys has that forgot the name of the guy but he's all yeah, black yeah. tactical outfit so like in Warzone 2 they purposely didn't have a, a skin like that and they purposely stopped selling the rose skin because it was too OP mm-hmm. now they have this guy who's the same thing i wonder if it's a problem also, how big is the hitbox on Nicki Minaj's ass? I need to see the game data on that. Uh, last thing we're going to talk about is Obama mains Captain Falcon. Who That's would right. have, who who <laughs> thought otherwise? I mean, you would think the president of the United States is picking up Smash Brothers. You don't think he's going to gravitate towards Captain Falcon? The this piece of information comes from uh, Smash Brothers community organizer Cody Daniels, who met the former president in 2015. Uh, Daniels is a prominent organizer of the N64 Games tournaments, having one of the largest houses uh, house tournaments for the original game. His meeting with Obama was thanks to a Make a Wish Foundation, where his wish was his wish was to play a couple rounds of the original game on N64 with the president. Daniels talks more about his experience facing off against the president in the game uh, in a recent live stream. Uh, this event was uh, this event was Hustler Casino's Max Payne Monday Poker Stream, uh, an event used to raise money for the Make a Wish Foundation. Daniels, along with competitive Smash Brothers Melee player uh, Daniel uh, Tomfong, Tomfong Kinks uh, Lee, discussed various aspects of their competitive careers, including the aforementioned experience of playing with Barack Obama. Daniels explains to Lee that he took it easy on Obama, playing as Ness instead of his mains, Pikachu and Fox, while he invited others to guess who the former president played as. He eventually revered, uh, revealed it was Captain Falcon. Also, if you're playing Smash 64, I think part of the reason why I like Captain Falcon so much is that he was like the mysterious, like, yeah. like final guy that you unlock in the original, mm-hmm. like, Ed 64. And he was just a guy. Yeah. So it was like, and like, he's from a lesser known franchise so it was like really he was a really interesting character in, yeah. in the original n64 version so that yeah he, he's he's easy to he's an easy choice i think uh daniels notes that obama was a much better player at the game than one might think describing him as better than a casual player not only did they get to play the game the former president also signed the copy of uh, daniel's super smash brothers n64 cartridge that's crazy look at that it was a make a wish thing yeah i think it was a make a wish it thing. was a make a wish thing yeah that's cool uh so <laughs> ryan in the chat says i bet he's got a sick forward air never misses <laughs> and then eric says i feel like he'd main a robot projectile character okay, okay. Guys. all right guys uh Good that's jokes it. that's it for the news we don't have a tweet of the week what do we do i was what wo- do we do I was now wondering this are we going to have to just buy the rights to XCOM and give it to you when we do that? 
I was thinking we need a new jingle that is Twitter, TikTok, or any social media of the week, post of the week. Right. There's nothing. There's either it's tweet of the week was perfect. Yeah, until Twitter started until, to suck, and now all of a sudden it's it's not yes. Twitter anymore. And if we wanted to go along with it, we would do X go and give it to you. I'm but I'm not that. going along with I'm it. I'm not doing that. Post Dumbs of the bastard. week, it's not. It doesn't have the same no. ring to it. It's like what I like. Twitter had an identity. It had like an it. It's a mind of its own. Like it was the only social media platform where like the posts were called something else. I I, I saw the Wan show talking about how Twitter is. One of the most recognizable companies yeah. in the world. And they took it and just balled it up and threw it in the garbage and just started with a, a new company name. Like, y- you bought Twitter. Yeah. You bought that brand. It's like buying Coca Cola. Yeah. It's literally. And calling it X. It, yeah. It's literally up there with some of the biggest brand names of all time. And, and you just and you just threw it out. And like, how are you? Like, what's the SEO on this? You know, like, you just press X in Google. And I'm like, where's that going to take you? Porn, yeah, I think, mostly. Uh, well, actually, takes you to Twitter. <laughs> That's the fucked up thing is that X.com doesn't take you to X.com. It takes you to Twitter. It's a forwarding address. Yeah. So it's still Twitter. Uh, I can't wait for this website to just burn to the ground. It's getting close. It's getting very close. I was listening to um, the Waveform podcast and MPBHD's podcast. And one of the co-hosts on it thinks it has a conspiracy that like Elon is purposely doing this because he is so in debt from this purchase that he's just purposely trying to bankrupt the company so he doesn't have to pay the debt. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's going to claim it all as a loss. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk to you people. Yes. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Did I remember to open up Discord to see what Fred left? No. Fred. Uh, uh, this is still bald from last uh, from two weeks ago. Said, I would pay good American dollars to watch a Wolf Den dad on the podcast. Okay, well, good luck with yeah. that. <laughs> Trevor Grover, thank you. Uh, he said, I don't understand why Sony is releasing what is effectively a Wii U gamepad. Who is Project Q4? We'll find out when it comes out. I mean, yeah. and when we get new features on uh, their streaming stuff. Because, again, I think that that's happening. Trevor Ralph says, Bob, speaking of the Pikmin being global characters... Do you remember the animation that played when transferring Wii data to the Wii U? It was the Pikmin carrying all of your data over. I don't remember that at all. I only remember it for the... I didn't play much Wii U. Stuff. I remember that. Oh, transferring Wii data to the Wii U? Did we even do that? I don't think we did. I remember seeing videos of it, though, but I don't think we did that. Yeah, I don't think we did that. I think we just left it. Uh, we did 3DS, though. Yeah. And that was different. That was a little shop guy. Mm-hmm. Um... M. Skelton says, AJ's episode was the first one I saw. Now he's finally back. This was certainly a special episode. Well, thanks. <laughs> uh, Leanne Mustafa, Mustafa says, whoa, AJ, long time no see. He looks so hot now. It's a long Hell hair. yeah, it's a long hair. Yeah. It does something to you. Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> the camera's not on me for a reason. Because it doesn't want to look at bald people. It really didn't want to switch. <laughs> I know. Um, Piece of shit. I was. I thought we. Oh, Fred from the week before that says, "Will now that we have about a month away from the live action release on Netflix, you gonna watch One Piece?" I'll watch an episode. <laughs> That's not gonna be good. No. What is? You know what is good? My Adventures with Superman. Very good show. That the that might be a a, a good way. This live action version might be a good way to get people to, to watch One Piece. Because they're yeah. starting it over. Yeah. But I have little faith that it's going to be any good. Yeah, Netflix's batting average when it comes to like live action anime is like not great. Like, I don't like the idea of them rebooting Trigun. Yeah. But they got to do that to One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, it's good, the new Trigun. I heard, yeah. yeah. I, I want to try it. You want to Trigun it? 
Okay. Now we're in the chat. Hello. Everybody. All right. Hey, everybody. Tweet of the week is too ingrained in the Wolf Den podcast lore for it to be changed just because Twitter decided to change. I mean, the whole thing yeah. is, is tw- a tweet of the week. But not anymore. And Chiro Oda, who's the guy, the one the one guy piece guy. <laughs> oh, uh, Johnny One Piece? Said it is his last chance to get the world to see it, and also he made them reshoot scenes if he didn't like it. I mean, last good. chance to get the world to see it. There's like 10,000 episodes. There is like a web, like there's like an abridged like like yeah. trajectory that you can watch, and I'm a little interested, but I don't have time to watch even the animes that I want to watch. Yeah. Um, I like Bob's socks. Thanks there, Mario stars. Wahoo. Wahoo. Yee-hee. I don't know why the camera likes me so much. Hello. Tweet of the week changed to post from the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to be able to pull TikToks, but that's hard for for yeah for production. For our whole production crew to to post yeah. to to show the TikTok to you guys. It's hard for them. Bob, can you check out the article from comicbook.com and the town switch to price that reportedly revealed? Uh, I forgot that you sent this before. Um, $400. Hmm. That they're aiming for. It's the price they're aiming for. I think that makes sense. I mean, it's not going to be the price of the current switch. It, it has to be at least the OLED. I don't see. Nintendo has always like been the lesser price system. Mm-hmm. The one time it wasn't was the Wii U and we saw how that turned out. So I don't know if like I don't know if they would do that. I know other systems are. I know the Steam Deck is. I know the. I mean that it's still the lesser priced system, right? Well, if you're not including the Series X. But I think part of the reason why the Switch was so successful was because you know, it, yeah, it was three hundred dollars, but like compared to what the other systems were at the time, it was fairly affordable. You know, because they want more people to have it. Yeah, so. and. and- I think that this is pretty, pretty much the same ratio. If you're if yeah. you're if you're coming after the the current gen, the problem is that the current gen consoles um, have been out for so long. Yeah, that it's we lose perspective that the Switch was technically a last gen console. Mm-hmm. So that three hundred dollar price tag was up against the Xbox One and the Xbox and, and the PlayStation Four, right? Which were how much at launch? Weren't they three hundred dollars? The the PS Four, yeah. I think they were like four hundred dollars. And then they had the Pro version, which was more. Yeah, I thought the Pro was four hundred. I think the Pro was four hundred because they lowered the price of the base model. The PS Four launched in twenty thirteen, and during its lifetime, and in okay. At launch, the console was four hundred dollars. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, and then the Switch was three hundred. Mm-hmm. That makes that makes sense to me. Um, and going up against the Steam Deck at that same price is kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'm a. They they have to have a lot of. They have to have one hell of a Mario game at launch. I'm sure they will. Yeah. And that'll be enough to drive it. I was yeah. going to say they need to have some some power in there or something worth upgrading to. But, yeah. I mean, a, a new Mario game would be enough. What do you think the new console's gimmick might be? I think it... Um, I, I, I think it, it'll be... I think it'll be... It'll feel like a woman's touch. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be like any real gimmick to it. I think like the Joy Cons will be better. I really hope that there's no real gimmick to it, but I think that there's gonna be something that's dumb that we're gonna have to pay for. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like hopefully, like the only real gimmick is like the Joy Cons are like more comfortable to hold. Yeah, they'll be they'll feel like a woman's the touch. woman's touch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. Do you? Isn't there a debate about if it's pronounced X or cross? What are we talking about? For Twitter? The Xbox? Or Twitter no, is... No, no. If you're talking about PlayStation bu- uh, controllers, the DualShock controllers, yes, there is a debate. That... I think it, I think they just call it cross, don't they? Sony calls it cross. Officially, yeah. it's cross. Colloquial... I know how to pronounce this word. 
Cloaca. Cloaca. <laughs> it's pronounced X. Yeah, I mean, they call it cross. It must be a Japanese thing. Yeah. We see that as the letter X. Yes. You know? It's, yeah. There's a letter for it. Yeah. All right. We're done. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and so forth and so on. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Um, I'll be streaming on Thursday, probably. I got a video coming out, hopefully Thursday. At this point, it might be Friday. Oopsies. Um, and then we'll be at Long Island Retro this Saturday. Yes. Uh, probably in the afternoon. Uh, we'll just be walking around. Yeah. Come, come across us. Uh, when's the next Will appearance on Nintendo? That's a good question. That's a good question. When are we right. doing Nintendo? Um. All right. Uh, go say hello to AJ. Uh, he is playing Pokemon Stadium too. And tell him how hot he is. Tell him how hot he is. Go. Oh my god. And do heart emojis and stuff. Yeah. Uh. All right. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.